It's been two years since the release of Ninjago City Gardens, and fans of the Ninjago City line of sets have been eagerly awaiting the next chapter of the saga. Rumors began swirling a couple of months ago about such a set, and today we finally have the official images of the Ninjago City Markets. Is this set a worthy successor to the previous Ninjago City sets? Do I plan on getting this? And are we finally getting the very first flushable Lego toilet? Stick around for a detailed breakdown of the largest Ninjago set ever. In order to answer these questions, it's important to note the key characteristics of the Ninjago City line. First, they are modular. They can connect to one another, and even the modular buildings, via Technic pins on both sides, place nine studs in from the front and back, and on top of a base plate. Also important is that the sets do not have an overhang in the upper levels that would prevent them from connecting to their brethren. Second, they have a similar evolution in building architecture and materials. The lower levels are the old city built from wood and plaster and stone. Water surrounds the stone walkways and is filled with lily pads and different types of grasses. The upper levels are more modern and filled with bright, bold colors and flashy signs. Finally, they all have at the top of them some sort of tower and or long antenna. Next, they come with a large number of minifigs. Ninjago City had 19, Ninjago City Docks had 14, and Ninjago City Gardens had 22. Fourth, these sets represent strong value. The previous iterations all come in at around five and a half cents per piece, which, while not my preferred measure, does work in these cases. Finally, and most importantly, they contain tons of details. This can be seen through the interiors, the mini builds, inventive roof designs, and clever building techniques throughout. Also, these sets look great on display and contain a certain wow factor. So these characteristics are a mixture of objective and subjective, but let's go ahead and dive in. The Ninjago City Markets is clearly a modular set in its approach. The Technic bricks are readily seen, as are the two 32 by 32 base plates it is built upon. Indeed, this is not only the largest Ninjago set in terms of piece count, but in terms of Ninjago City, it's the widest as well. Both sides of the markets have elevated walkways that connect seamlessly with the other sets, and there are no overhangs. The left side is interesting in that the exterior wall is recessed by a stud so that it can accommodate the Technic gear that raises and lowers what I think is a platform. This image shows how it can connect to the Ninjago City Gardens on this side, and really, they look great together. As with Ninjago City Gardens, the lanterns hanging from the walkway railings are transparent light blue, although this is a deviation from the transparent orange lanterns included in the first two sets of the series. The verdict in terms of modularity? Check. The markets, interestingly, does not contain a lot of white on its lower level, a departure from the first few Ninjago City sets, but it is still consistent with the old city feel that we come to expect. There are two levels about seven studs high with plenty of wood timbers, stonework, and tan or nougat walls. Basically, muted colors galore. There is, though, one exception, which is on the back right-hand side of the set, the street vendor minifig has painted her walls a mint green color. I'm wondering if maybe she's a florist based on the greenery that lines her walls, but let me know in the comments if I'm wrong. The second level also keeps up with the previous sets. On the right we have a purple and turquoise arcade, or parlor of sorts, a bright light orange restroom, some turquoise splashed around a food stand, and a lime green and red stand advertising the food court. The left side is perhaps more muted. Here we see some white walls and black roof juxtaposed against the lime green and red tower with some teal plates mixed in. Both sides have tall antennae that help to add height to the build. Verdict in terms of the evolution of the build? 
check. This set comes with 21 minifigs, a number commensurate with the size and price of the set. The minifigs are interesting, such as Cyrus Borg in his wheelchair, the baker with his dual molded hat and hairpiece, Dareth who looks like Elvis, and more. I've only seen the movie and not the show, so I can't make a fully informed judgment as to the specific accuracies to the characters and who should or should not be included, but with 21 minifigures overall, this is definitely in line with what we've come to expect from Ninjago City. So the verdict here, check. What about value? At 6,163 pieces for 370 US dollars, this set comes in right at about six cents per piece. While this is slightly more expensive than the originals, keep in mind that inflation has been high and, at least here in the United States, there is still considerable uncertainty in terms of how long inflation will persist. This still represents a strong value, especially since many fans still use the 10 cents per piece threshold. So verdict for value, check. Now that we're done with more of the objective measures, Let's get into the best part, the details. The first thing that jumps out to me is the tram. Its yellow and white color scheme pops against the rest of the set, and the snot building technique is well done and reminds me a little bit on a very small scale of the N64 block. Traveling between the left and right sides of the markets, the feature is critical to tying this set together. First, and most obviously, the tram is a mode of transportation that allows characters to move from one level to another and one side to the other. But its secondary role is also important. It covers an uncharacteristically large gap in the middle of the set. Remove the tram and the middle looks empty. This is very different from every other Ninjago City set. They all feature cramped spaces and make use of every inch of space that's available. The markets doesn't do that. This is likely born out of a compromise. Already over 6,000 pieces, a properly built up center would increase the cost to over $500. Because this is a 14 plus set and not an Icons or UCS set, this may not have been seen as a feasible approach. The second detail that grabs my attention, of course, is the lime green tower. The use of wheel wells to encase the transparent curved panels is a wonderful detail. The curved architecture at the top fits well with the Ninjago City lineup, and the red support beams are appropriate, given how such large structures are added on top of the old city and require that support. So even though the set designer could have simply just put in the tower, the attention to detail character of the city is fantastic. The red bridge is also noteworthy. Ninjago City came with a nice old stone bridge, but this one is better in my opinion. The red arches are effective, as are the tube pieces used for the railing and how they're integrated well with the finer bridge details. But what's most impressive is the use of angles. LEGO has become very good at using angles to create depth and detail, such as what we saw in Rivendell, and I welcome the continuation of this approach. One detail that is not well emphasized on the box image is that rooftop food court. I think this is a fun looking part to the set, as you have the lime green roller coaster track and the red squid-like creature holding a frying pan. This part might tie in well with the Ninjago City Gardens, and I'm curious to see what it looks like with that set on the right side, rather than on the left as we see in one of the images that they gave us. With the eye-catching features out of the way, let's dig into the nitty-gritty details. On the left-hand side, I love the use of books as a roof detail for the bakery. And note the door piece flipped on its side to create the awning and opening. Very creative. The dragon print sticker is really interesting. And I also see the one by two groove bricks in dark tan, the first time we're getting that piece in this color. This split level image also leads me to believe that the levels may not separate on the left hand side due to the tram line. So to allow for playability, the bakery and apartment interiors slide out. 
Another thing that I noticed on this left hand side is they place a 1x4x2 picket fence piece inside a 1x2x6 arch. This is really creative and I've never seen that before. I really like how the bakery sign is constructed using the fancy vines from the elves line in gold and then they loop in the ring piece. Behind that, the windows for the baker's apartment look to be very complex, although I'm having a hard time telling exactly how they're constructed. We don't get a great view of the inside corner building, but it does strike me as similar to the left side of the Ninjago City docks with that large angled plate. However, I think the markets here do a better job integrating the building with that angle to make it more interesting. The upper level on the left is consumed by the tram station entrance, which promises to be a rather dense build. The standout to me are the stacked windows with the white inserts and the angled cherry blossom tree with petals littered on the ground next to the roots. I'm contemplating placing this side next to the original Ninjago City with its cherry blossom tree that grows out of the abandoned apartment. Moving on to the right hand side of the set, the details just keep on coming. First, we have the water pouring out of the sewer, a great touch that is consistent with the Ninjago City line. The red pillars look fantastic, but the green, gold, and dark tan trimming above them is even better. Check out the roof details here though. The 1x5x3 stable door piece that is in about a dozen sets makes its first appearance in black. We get four of them here lined with black ingots and tiles. I think it looks fantastic. The stickers look great and even if you don't like stickers, I think it's something that's expected in Ninjago City sets. But this set does a nice job with the stickers. In particular, this Temple of Air Jitsu sticker in the winter. I think it looks great. We don't have a lot of great images of the inside right corner building, but I'm seeing a mint green corner door frame, so yet another new color for an older piece. I'm also really enjoying the look of this arcade or karaoke bar on the second level. The purple and turquoise pop nicely, and the snot curved windows are excellent. Interestingly, it looks like this set borrows a technique from Ninjago City. Note the 1x2x5 columns in transparent purple with tiles inside. Instead of just piling some 1x1 round tiles though, this time we're putting some macaroni tiles in there and I think that's a pretty fun detail. The interior looks pretty nice too, as there's a jukebox, presumably playing some Elvis for Dareth to sing along with, a small pool table, a small counter, and a karaoke stage. This is definitely a fun hangout spot. We do have a walkway that connects the sides, complete with a nice red arch, some flower pots, and a unique guardrail approach using the garage door pieces in a transparent neon green. Again, this is the first time we're seeing this piece in that color. At the top of the right side, we'll start with the food court. It's a hodgepodge of colors, which is a bit weird to me, but it works. Note the turquoise door frame. Yep, we've got another old piece in a new color. And if I'm not mistaken, we're getting the 1x3x3 window frame in sand blue for the first time as well. Speaking of which, the dark blue windows as a railing is okay, but I'm most excited about that 3x3x2 round corner window in this color for, yep, the first time. Now we come to the most controversial part of this set, at least in our family, the bathroom. We got a bathroom at the top of the original Ninjago City set, but this time we get one with a twist. You can actually flush the toilet. That's right, if you put in a one by one reddish brown tile, press down on the handle, it comes out the sewer right into the water. Personally, I am a big fan of it, but Autumn says it's the worst part of the set. But hey, if the Lionite's castle gets a functioning, albeit not flushing toilet, why not Ninjago City? So is this a worthy successor to Ninjago City? Well, it's a bit different than the others, and that's not a bad thing. 
you still get a wonderfully detailed set that promises to be an incredible build, plenty of minifigs, and a good value given the high price. The added width leads to a decrease in the height, but I think it pairs well with Ninjago City Gardens based on the image they've released, and I think it's going to work just fine with Ninjago City Docks and Ninjago City as well. The main drawback, in my opinion, is the relatively high volume of empty space compared to its predecessors. Even if it wasn't possible to build out the back center of the set due to price constraints, I would think that a set named Markets would have more vendors in that empty space. There's a tea table and one other stand, and that's about it. And I get there are some structures on the right and left that have some vendors in them, but there's a lot of empty space. And that's why I think it's crucial for them to include that tram to tie things together and fill the void in the middle of the set. At the end of the day, though, if you have any of the other Ninjago City sets, are a fan of creative builds, you want to buy sets at good value to build up your mocking pieces, or you like impressive shelf displays, this is a great option for you. I plan on getting this on release date, if at all possible, in a few weeks, and I look forward to placing it next to the other Ninjago City sets. Now, before you click away, you want to know which Summer 2023 friend set I think will be the most successful? Click on the bottom right link. Thanks for watching, and always remember to keep building together.